So Unit 2 1.3, now we've thought about who the holders of information are, the ways that this information uh, may be stored. What we move on to think about now is how we can access this information from various different devices. So this includes things like handheld devices, such as tablets and smartphones, wearable devices, such as the things like the iWatch and the, 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 the Galaxy uh, Watch from Samsung, ebook readers like Kindles and Kobo's. You've got portable devices such as laptops, larger tablets like the iPad Pro, also, uh, devices which are less portable, fixed devices such as desktop computers, smart televisions, Xboxes, Playstations that have internet uh, connectivity and so on. Shared devices such as a database server or a data center or cloud storage like iCloud or Google Drive or OneDrive. And we're interested in what the characteristics are of these devices and how they access the information, what purpose they tend to get used for, and what's good and not so good, the advantages and disadvantages of these particular devices. So if we just take one, we can have a look here at a database server. Now you can see what happens is someone logs on using a device, then the application runs on their computer, and then the application accesses the relevant records from the database server. So this means it's available to all the users on the network. It's a server. That's what servers do. Everybody can log on to one server, and the server serves each individual user's computer, thereby serving each individual user. That means all the files are shared. All the databases, the records, the tables, the searches, they can all be shared with everybody who accesses that server. It can be password protected. It can also have tiered access, which means people lower down the tier get less access than people further up the tier, which makes the system more secure. It's easy to update. Anybody can update it. Anybody can search for information using uh, you know, a client. The disadvantage is, well, if the network goes down, access to your server goes down. If your server goes down, obviously access to your server goes down. But one of the advantages of keeping everything on a server is that you only have to back up that one server and not all the individual computers that access that server. So it's a faster job. So the kind of things that you may be asked questions about are these IEs. So let's have a quick look at an example question. So this question is based on a study about a disaster relief organization who go into areas where there have been earthquakes or tornadoes or floods or famine, and they um, then are able to uh, use their devices to uh, you know, keep in touch with what's going on and, and send information back home, etc. So the first question tells us that team members use handheld devices to record videos. And for one mark, you just have to identify a handheld device that could be used to record these videos. And then a four mark question, similar to the one we looked at before, describe an advantage and describe a disadvantage. That's your two marks. And your further explanation, your further description will give you the extra mark. So this is the handheld device that you've talked about. And this is where you explain what's good about this device, maybe what's not so good about this device. So if we have a quick look at the mark scheme, we can see uh, some of the devices suggested could be anything that can be handheld or wearable and obviously needs to be able to record videos. It's, there's no mention in the question of how long the videos need to be, so the issue of storage on these devices is less of an issue for us at this point. So things like tablets, smartphones, mobile phones, satellite phones, any camera that's mounted on a helmet like a GoPro or a body-mounted camera like the police use, that would have all got you a mark there. And then looking at the advantages of these devices... 
If you have said they're light, they're portable, and the description then goes on to explain, that, that, you know, these are great things to carry into disaster areas. Um, you know, you can just stick them in your pocket um, and you can just take them with you. They don't really weigh a lot. They don't need to be attached to a power source because they run off battery. You can communicate with other members in the team. You can send videos backwards and forwards. You can also make sure that these other team members are safe. Videos can be shot without little disruption. You just lift, hold it up and press the button and away you go. They can be connected to the internet so the videos can be saved and shared. They don't need a lot of extra equipment. You don't need tripods and you know special lenses and things like that. And if you're a satellite phone, they're generally a bit stronger. Um, you don't need signals because they work from satellites. If there's no 3G, those will still work. Disadvantages, battery life's not great. There might not be opportunity to recharge if the power's gone down. They're small, easily lost, easily broken. The resolution of the video might not be great. They might not be able to store as much video due to memory capacity. Now, they are giving you a mark for that, although it's not specifically mentioned in the question. You might not be able to get a signal because, um, you know, the area you may be in may have had the towers knocked down by, you know, the tornado or the 3, 4G mass might have gone down, etc. Or the weather conditions may be affecting the device. If it's a satellite phone, for example, the weather can sometimes interfere uh, with the signal on those devices. So the whole idea here is thinking about these different types of devices, how they differ from each other, what the different devices can do, what their purpose is, and what is good and not so good about these different types of devices that we use to store and access information.